Now that we know how to receive OSC messages into PD, let's do something cool. I've got a Wiimote embedded in a DJ Hero controller, and it's connected to Oscillator. The different messages coming from the controller are set to use OSC routing to localhost port 9000. In PD, I've started a basic patch that has a subpatch with all of the OSC routing. It would take a while to create this um, while doing the video, so I decided to do this ahead of time. What's important here is that the outlets are each of the pieces of data from the Wii uh, DJ Hero controller. The inlet is UDP receive 9000, which is the port that the DJ Hero um, control is being sent in Oscillator. And I've got two tables set to take a left and right channel from a stereo file. I'll click this big green button and choose a beat. Now this PD sound file patch uh, sub patch is basic um, audio table playback. I've gone over this in previous movies, so if you're curious to know how you playback audio from a table, you'll want to check those out. I've got all the basic math and components here, and one thing that's a little bit special is I've got a reverb component using the free verb um, object, and as well I've coded a small volume change subpatch connected to the plus and minus buttons on the DJ Hero controller. So as I press plus, the volume will increase, minus the volume will decrease. So the most obvious um, thing that you'd probably want to do with a DJ Hero control is scratch an audio file. It makes a lot of sense, it's the affordance of the controller, um, and it's a lot of fun to do. So what we're going to do is create a really basic scratch algorithm so that when we press down on the green button, and move the platter will scratch the audio that's loaded into the table. And the reason we want to press down the green button is so that we don't inadvertently scratch the file by brushing the platter. This way we commit to scratch by pressing and moving. And also it, it really makes a lot of sense with what you do on a regular turntable which is you place your hand down and you stop the platter and then you move it. And we couldn't, if we just placed our hand down anywhere we wouldn't have a way to just to tell it, okay, stop. Um, or at least if we wanted to, we would have to take the platter data and then manipulate it uh, rather extensively to get it to stop naturally. Using the button is just easier. Okay, so let's take a listen to this file. We'll turn on the DSP. It's a real basic beat. Um, yeah, nothing special. Got it off of freesound.org, so um, that's a, that site's really good for uh, grabbing uh, audio to, mani to manipulate. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go to the sound file patch uh, subpatch, and we'll create the first part of our scratch algorithm. So what we're doing is we're saying, when the green button is down, stop the playback, and then let us scratch the file. So let's code the first part of this, which is the green button stopping the playback. Okay, so we'll label this one stop playback if green button is down. I've already set up uh, some sends from my DJ Hero uh, controller, and one of them is the green button, S green. So I'll receive R green. I'll put a change object right after it so that it doesn't continually bang and connect those two together. And then I want to select one. So remember that a button is going to send out one when it is depressed and zero when it is not depressed. So what we're going to do is use these two outlets from select um, to code the zero to be okay, or the one rather, that is it's down to be stop the recording, and the zero to be start the recording. So I'll create a bang so that we can actually see this happen for visual feedback, and then a message box of zero, and this will stop the recording. And in case you don't remember, the 
recording is stopped by sending zero to the left inlet of phaser. It stops it in its current place. So now to start the recording, I've actually got this coded over here uh, where I'm taking the rate of phaser, I'm pumping it into um, a float to store it, and then I'm sending a bang into the float to send that out. So I'm just going to copy this structure and paste it. Now, I'll create a send called um, phaser place. One thing to be mindful of, since I just copied a new instance of this receive phaser rate, um, it might not actually have the rate loaded into the float. So it's a good idea to either bang that information again or load the file again, which was what I'm going to do. Before I do that, I'll take uh, this phaser place and create a receive phaser place and put that into the left inlet of phaser. Okay. Now if I if I press this now it's not going to work because again the play portion of this doesn't have the phaser rate loaded. I just know this through dealing with PD a lot and uh, creating new instances of receives. They're not necessarily initialized so you have to send the data again. So to do this I'll open the file. I mean, I'll open up a different file. Let's test it out. So if I press the green button, it should um, stop. And if I press, and when I let go of the green button, it should play. So I'll turn on the DSP, press the green button down, and let go. So you can see it, watch the bangs here. Okay, so that's our successful first step is to stop the recording or the playback when the green button is down and then release. But that's not the fun stuff. The fun stuff is actually implementing the scratch um, into the patch here. So now what we'll do is create okay two scratch. So for this we're going to need the platter. I've already got a send platter. We're also going to need the green again. And I'm going to implement a, um, a kind of scratch depth that'll let me implement subtle scratches or really wide scratches. Um, and I can do that with my hand by sort of moving the control subtly, but this is going to be in a, an added dimension. So we're going to use uh, the FX dial, which is this knob right here. Okay, so to do this, First, let's receive from the platter. And then let's receive from the green dial. And to make sure that the platter doesn't inadvertently scratch, I'm going to create a spigot. And create a toggle above the spigot into the right inlet and then hook the green dial into that. Now if I press the green dial, you'll see that opens and closes the spigot. Okay. Then I'll take the platter information and that's what's going to be turned on and off or gated by the spigot. So as long as the spigot is not open, we don't get scratching. Okay, so the next thing to do, I'm going to create a um, H slider so that we can visualize where the platter is. So HSL, right click it, properties, and I'll make it a little bit larger. So let's make the height 24 and the output range from 0 to 1. Okay, so now just this much, we can start to test out the platter. So if I press press the green button down, you can see this move. So already you should maybe be getting excited that something's going to happen. We're going to put a change object right after this to make sure that it's at its steady state. It's not continually sending out information. 
Okay, so now to get scratching to happen, what we're essentially doing is we're taking the index that's being read uh, at tab read four, and then we're scrubbing around that index. So remember that we've got thousands of samples um, in this file, and so we have thousands of indexes. So we're going to be scrubbing around uh, the indexes and sending that into tab read four. Um, and we're going to be creating the, the variance by using uh, the effect style for depth. So eventually, I'm going to be uh, multiplying the current position of the platter by then the depth of the scratch. Okay, so I'll create a multiplication object down here. And I'll put the leftmost inlet of, or I put the change into the leftmost inlet. Now, I want to receive the effect style, which I've already set up in the main window. And what I'll do here is I'll visualize this using a knob. But the effect style is going to send from 0 to 1. Since I've got thousands of samples, I'm going to scale this up in a really big way so that it'll go from 0 to 40,000. So times 4, 40,000 here. And then I'll create a knob. And that's easy, just knob. And right click it, choose properties. So the output range is from 0 to 40,000. Now if I move the effects dial, you'll see it move. And the deal is that it'll just be continuous. That's how the control is sent out. So you would need to uh, code a floor and a ceiling for this. And we're not going to do that now. OK, now we'll take this and create a number box just so we can see what the numbers look like. We'll make it wide because there's a lot of values here. And then connect that to the right inlet of the multiplication. Now we'll get the result. We'll go ahead and truncate it by using an int. And then we'll use a number box nbx, right click, and choose properties. We'll use this because we can style this. And we'll make it size 24, height 28, make it really large. And let's get a little more space on the screen before we continue. OK, now if I press and hold the platter, you'll see these numbers here in the green move. Okay, so I'm sort of moving it very small. And then this knob here, we'll call it scratch depth. Now, if I increase the scratch depth, the total range of the scratching will increase. Okay, so that's just a, a nice way to get additional control. Finally, we need to put this into tab read 4. If I just connect it, I'm going to get clicks. I need to use a line to smooth out the changes. So I'll take the output and oops, let's create a message. Dollar sign one, that's the first thing that's coming in. Let's say 100 milliseconds. And there still is a possibility it is going to click if we do it too fast, but it should be okay. Now we'll create line with the tilde because we need an audio rate line. How do you know that? Well, because the input here, the tab read four, is taking audio rate information. Finally, the last thing we do, we'll create a send with a tilde and we'll say scratch it. Remember, these things are case sensitive. Okay, now we'll come over here, 
receive with a tilde, scratch it, and pump that into both tab reads. Okay, now it should be working. Cross our fingers, go to the main window, turn on the DSP. Okay, we'll take a look at the patch. And I'll mess with the scratch depth. Very subtle. So it takes bigger motions. And then really high. This will be really crazy. Sort of a more conventional scratch sound. Um, as you do this, Sometimes the table read is going to create these hiccups like you just heard. It takes a little bit more sleuthing uh, to fix that, but anyhow, you get the basic idea of how to implement a scratch. So let's turn off the DSP. Now you can go and create even more control uh, for this patch if you wanted. You could create a panner perhaps using the joystick. Okay, and to do that, you would come over to the joypad X and Y. I've actually started a joy Y. And then you would affect um, information going into the DAC. You could maybe create some sort of cyclic uh, function that when you press the E button, this really big button, it would cycle through some options, maybe filtering. You could do different kinds. Let's say if you press the red button and scratched it, that would be some sort of granular scratching. So the possibilities are, are really um, through the roof in terms of how you can take this really great game control and make it into an expressive music controller. And especially, it's not expensive uh, relative to a turntable or other controls, and you've got all control over what you can do with it.